Four days later, on January 9th, a celebrated war hero known to the nations as Old Rough and Ready, a grizzled veteran of violent conflicts raging from the War of 1812, Mexican War, died in bed at the age of 64. So Old Rough and Ready wasn't, you know, ready for some fucking milk and cherries. Old Rough and Ready killed fucking Mexicans, had fucking slaves the whole time, but eventually he tried to do right at the very end of his fucking life and um, stop the expansion of slavery into the new territories, and he's fucking poisoned with arsenic. Somebody killed him with some arsenic poisoning. Um, and this isn't actually a big surprise because you had James Polk who died of cholera and de debilitating diarrhea a few weeks a uh, few weeks after leaving the White House. So who knows why? Maybe he killed a lot of fucking people and they came back and got him. Maybe it was just sickness, you know, fucking just uh, they wasn't they didn't have healthy practices back in those days. No hospitals and shit. Um, Thomas Jefferson appears to have died of a amoebic dysentery. Several presidents, including James Monroe and Andrew Jackson. Believed to succumb to tuberculosis, which could be transmitted via air or food. So that's uh, old rough and ready, right? He died. Um, they had arsenic was in his fucking system. He was standing opposed. He was a slave owner, yet he was saying that he did not want slavery expanding into the new territories. So he did not want to sign with Henry Clay's fucking compromise of 1850. He thought he, he all you had to do is just make California. He, there didn't need to be a compromise. Once California was created, then that would just they would decide for themselves. Um, he said that if you try to secede from the Union, that he would hang the fucking disunionists, those who was not for America. No worse than he hung the deserters and the traitors in the Mexican-American War. Um, milk, cherries, right? And fucking water and uh, sunlight. That's a deadly combination. Um, arsenic, too. So he had arsenic in his system. The um, Millard Fillmore eventually becomes a fucking president after that. And he signs the uh, Compromise of 1850. So he undoes all of Zachary Taylor's fucking, you know, uh, fight. Um, uh, to a, you know, and actually, they got the Fugitive Slave Act. The South got the Fugitive Slave Act, and they also got the ability to, for new territories, to decide whether or not they want to be a slave state or not. So the South actually won a substantial fucking deal by having um, the the fucking president die of fucking arsenic poisoning, and then Millard Fillmore comes up and he signs the damn thing right off the bat. Uh, Millard Fillmore, great fucking dude. He asked his wife to stand out on the lawn in the snowy Washington inauguration of Franklin Pierce. She eventually catches pneumonia and dies. So and then Millard Fillmore goes on a five-week vacation. So Millard Fillmore is a fucking prick, just a low-life piece of shit. Tells his wife to stand out on the lawn in the snowy w Washington, you know, Washington, D.C., the inauguration of Franklin Pierce. Then she catches pneumonia and dies, just like what the fuck happened with uh, William Henry Harrison. Uh, Zachary Taylor's. Uh, father, he had owned 10,000 acres throughout Kentucky. He held 26 slaves, so one of the fucking you know, pioneers of Kentucky. Uh, Zachary Taylor is very much Louisville, very much Kentucky, very much America. He was going to hang, again, this fucking disunionist. So he was like the Lincoln before the Lincoln. He was for union so much that he says, if you fucking get out of this union, I will fucking kill you. Okay, so we can just disagree about slavery or not disagree about it, but if you try to get out of this fucking club, I'll kill you. Um, since there's no formal schools on the Kentucky frontier, Zachary Taylor had a sporadic formal education. He basically was uneducated, rough and ready, just on the frontier and shit, homeschooled. Um, then he's a fucking, you know, the military leader, so he's learning on his feet by experience, going just like Clint Eastwood, going with his gut, going with intuition rather than logic. Schoolmaster recalled, uh, recalled Taylor as a quick learner, but then they said that he had a weak grasp of spelling and grammar, and then his handwriting was later described as that of a near illiterate. So, you know, the little bit of fucking formal education he had was, there was one that said he was a quick learner, but then his spelling, his grammar, and his fucking writing was that of an illiterate. But that's very much Kentucky. Two out of five adults can't even fucking read, so that's illiterate as fuck. Um, so, you know, the, the illiterate fucking Kentuckians of today could very much um, uh, relate to the illiterate Zachary Taylor of yesterday, the pot-smoking Zachary Taylor. Um, so he's making speeches at Washington Monument, he's going to festivities. The supposedly he was jealous of Henry Clay, right? He had the compromise, he was jealous. That was bullshit. He actually had a more principled stance. He had a shortest presidential tenure behind um, uh, Benjamin 
um, um, uh, uh, James Garfield and uh, William Henry Harrison. So no schools on the Kentucky frontier. He's homeschooled. He was a slave owner. He did say that he would hang Jefferson Davis if he seceded. So that was personally to Jefferson Davis, you know, eventually the fucking president of the Confederacy. So he is a big champion for the Union. He died 18, you know, when he was 65 or 64 years old. He was only in office for 16 months, one year and four months. Zachary Taylor was born in Virginia in 1784. He was taken as an infant to Kentucky and raised on a plantation. He was a career officer in the Army, but his talk was most often of cotton raisin. His home was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and he owned a plantation in Mississippi. So, you know, as an infant, he's, he's baby Kentucky, you know, he's like been here the whole fucking time. Yeah, born in Virginia, but Kentucky, Virginia, it's the same fucking state. Very, very many of the traditions of Virginia came to Kentucky. Appalachian Mountains didn't stop the fucking slave owning trade from, you know, it didn't stop it. So, uh, the secession crisis still in school swing when Zachary Taylor died in July 1850. The little known vice president, Millard Fillmore, the fucking bitch. Millard Phil fucking Moore of New York State thrust into office. He's a piece of shit, right? Millard Fillmore's path to the White House was paved in 1841 after the death of President William Henry Harrison. Constitution was unclear about the concept of presidential secession. And Harrison's vice president, John Tyler, made the bold move of declaring himself as Harrison's successor. By taking the presidential oath, the Tyler precedent was used for presidential secession until the 25th Amendment was passed in 1967. So Tyler basically just jumped up, right? William Henry Harrison died, and then John Tyler was like, I'm president, me, and then nobody fucking argued with him. Uh, and then that's why he was able, uh, Millard Fillmore was able to become president because of the Tyler precedent. Uh, eventually, the 25th Amendment was passed in 1967, so you didn't have to... Just, you know, the first person who called out, I'm president, was well, you know, that isn't the way it was decided. There was actually legal fucking um, code that you could go by. So Mexicans offered 320 acres for any deserters in the Mexican-American War. The women and local folks were really nice to deserters. So Zachary Taylor, he would murder deserters and spies just like George Washington and just like Shade Guevara. Um, so he murdered deserters and spies and even threatened anybody who seceded from the Union that he would hang them just like a deserter or a spy. So I guess anybody was a traitor to his fucking war was a traitor. Uh, the rapid and inexplicable nature of Zachary Taylor's death fit the profile for acute arsenic poisoning. Coupled, uh, coupled with the laughably inept state of professional medicine, they're fucking bleeding them, letting them to be blistered. Lots of speculation can come from that. Members of the rising anti-slavery coalition, soon to become the Republican Party, were suspicious that the president met with foul play. There was also, um, the suspicions wasn't limited to Taylor. Over time, the list of alleged assassination victims grew to include Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, James Buchanan, among others. So the fucking, the slave-owning states, they had some fucking, you know, secret Illuminati fucking group going around assassinating all these motherfuckers. Possibly, right? They had fucking Lincoln. They got Lincoln. They got fucking Zachary Taylor. Now they're saying maybe they got fucking Henry Harrison, Buchanan, Polk died right after in office, Andrew Jackson. On July 4th, 1850, after watching the monument, right, the Independence uh, Day celebration, Zachary Taylor sought refuge from the oppressive heat by consuming a pitcher of milk and a bowl of cherries. 10 o'clock in the morning on January 9th, 1850, he was very ill. Zachary Taylor called his wife to him. Asked her not to weep, saying, I've always done my duty. I'm ready to die. My only regret is for the friends I leave behind me. Upon his sudden death on July 9th, the cause was listed as gastroenteritis. Zachary Taylor was a captain in the War of 1812. Zachary Taylor participated in the battles against the Shawnee and Tecumseh. He was in the Battle of Tippecanoe. Zachary Taylor um, was in the Black Hawk War. It was a brief conflict in 1832 between the United States and Native Americans headed by Black Hawk. A Salk leader, the war erupted after Black Hawk and a group of Salks, Meskwakis, and Kickapoos, known as the British Band, crossed the Mississippi River into the U.S. state of Illinois. In April 1832, Black Hawk's motives were ambiguous, but he was apparently hoping to avoid bloodshed while resettling on land that had been ceded to the U.S. in a disputed 1804 treaty. Abraham Lincoln had fought in the 1832 Black Hawk War. So Abraham Lincoln, one of the few fucking wars he actually fought in was in the Black Hawk War. Zachary Taylor was there in the Black Hawk War. He was also there for the Second Seminole Conflict. Second Seminole War, which is known as the Florida War, was a conflict from 1835 to 1842 in Florida between various groups of Native Americans, collectively known as Seminoles in the United States, part of a series of conflicts 
called the Seminole Wars. The Second Seminole War, often referred to as the Seminole Wars, the most expensive Indian war fought in the United States. So the Florida War is killing fucking Seminoles in Florida. He's killing Blackhawks, you know, killing Sox and Kickapoos, Meskwakis. Um, he's killing the Shawnee. He was part of fucking Tecumseh's, you know, death. He helped in the aid in Tecumseh's death in the fucking Battle of Tippecanoe. Killing Shawnee, killing Miami, killing fucking Meskwakis, Kickapoos, fucking Blackhawk, Sox, killing Seminoles, um, killing Mexicans. So lots of Native Americans, lots of Mexicans. He was a plantation owner, and at the very end of this motherfucker's life, he tried to stop fucking slavery's expansion into the new part. Um, and maybe probably was fucking poisoned, um, and arsenic poisoned because of it. Uh, Franklin Pierce becomes a fucking president. He was one that was in the mexican America War where marijuana was twice as readily uh, available than the Vietnam War. So marijuana was, you know, um, in Franklin Pierce's life. He's the one that actually has the quotable saying that the only good thing that came out of the fucking mexican American War was that the, uh, um, it was marijuana. That was the only good thing that came out of the Mexican-American War. But Franklin Pierce is a dumb fuck. All of his children died young. He couldn't even raise a fucking kid right. He was abandoned by his party. He wasn't even renominated to run in the next fucking election. His reputation was destroyed when, during the Civil War, he declared support for the Confederacy. So Franklin Pierce was a fucking Confederate before the fucking Confederates. Right, so, you know, Millard Fulmore, fucking Franklin Pierce undid what the fuck Zachary Taylor was trying to do. Um, it was, his reputation, you know, was destroyed when he said he was for the Confederacy and personal correspondence between Franklin Pierce and Jefferson Davis was leaked to the public. And so don't forget that actually Franklin Pierce, not only did he smoke marijuana, but he was in the hashish. Ulysses S. Grant was in the cocaine. John F. Kennedy was in the prescription pills. Bill Clinton, George Bush, Obama, they was all in the fucking marijuana, cocaine, George Bush was snorting cocaine, um, Barack Obama, he was uh, dealing cocaine, so, you know, they was in the cocaine, they're fucking, you know, here, take some, do this, do a little bit of this, George Bush fucking snorting cocaine and shit, and um, John F. Kennedy, Ulysses S. Grant, these fucking presidents been doing fucking drugs their whole fucking life, you know, that's... And um, here in Kentucky, like I said, number one state for cancer, and we're not going to uh, uh, legalize this shit because we're, we're Bible Belt fucking conservative backwards dumb fucks. And I think that's so stupid that this culture of ignorance does prevail. We need to be smarter about our policies. We can be the smartest, richest fucking state in the fucking planet if we would just jump on board um, with the legalization of marijuana, uh, which I don't think that we'll actually do. So we'll have hemp. And um, and and then uh, Washington and Colorado of hemp and marijuana, and we'll just keep on slipping on, on down the drain. So the digital divide keeps on dividing us, and um, there's a lot more work to do. So, viva la revolution.